Wait, 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 whoa, whoa, whoa. Do we open it? Oh, God, yeah, 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 yeah. Open, open. Can I shoot through the walls? Maybe. Oh, oh. Hello, everybody, and welcome to SCP Pandemic. This is going to be a very early access look at a first-person hardcore tactical shooter heavily inspired by the events of SCP-5000. So I did a bit of a test run of this and it seems like the game is definitely in its early states. It is kind of available to purchase from Steam as it currently stands, but you need to be aware that it is kind of in this alpha mode. It did originally launch into beta, but it got, well, it was so buggy and there was a lot of kind of reviews on some of the gameplay and whatnot that the developers decided to revert it back to an alpha state. So you'll see here that we have a campaign mode. It's in, it's called campaign testing because it's in such an early state. We have weapons testing if you want to try out some of your guns. AI testing if you just want to see what some of the AI is like, shoot some people up. Wave survival and a PvP testing mode. As you can see, everything's in a testing state. So what you're about to see is kind of, it's, it's subject to change basically is what we're looking at. But either way, for the purpose of this video, I'm just gonna jump into the campaign and we'll see how far we can get. So here we are, inside Area 12, the Mountainside Facility. Uh -huh. Very good. No lag? No lag. Brilliant. So at the moment, the campaign mode doesn't really have much of a, a hold-your-hand storytelling like setting at all. There's no kind of introduction cutscene. The only thing it says there is get into your weapons room. You've lost your primary gear, you need to start fresh. How we lost it, we don't know, but we're here now. And this is just outside of Area 12, so we're going to try and make our way inside of Area 12 and then presumably try to get some information that's going to help us kind of get through the campaign. As you see in the top right there, welcome to Early Access Beta. A lot will be improved and added in the coming months and years. Exactly. So this campaign is basically, or the, or the whole game I guess you could assume, is it, it kind of tells the story of the SCP Foundation kind of gone rogue or specifically being possessed by an SCP entity that is um, forcing the Foundation to change its directive. So currently it was based around the idea that you, you contain SCPs, you research SCPs so that they can't kind of be unleashed upon the world and, and well, destroy the humanity's normal as we know it as today. But that has changed and now the SCP Foundation have changed their directive to destroy all human life. So that's fun. And now we're playing a rogue fire team to basically infiltrate Area 12 and kind of capture some information about a Psy Z program, which is turning everybody into zombies. And, well, that's kind of one of the mini attacks that the SCP Foundation is doing to end humanity. So there's lots of other attacks going on in the world, but this is just the one very specific one happening in Area 12. So, I picked up a, a submachine gun, I think, a uh, Sturibog, and we have our workbenches here. So inside the workbench, you've got a bunch of customization options for your guns. I'm not sure if these are going to be available once they've kind of ironed out the campaign, because it looks like we've got pretty much access to everything that we could possibly customize on this gun straight from the get-go. So I'm not sure if this is going to be things that you collect later on, things that you unlock as you get experience throughout the campaign, something like that. But we can try out some of the customization options so you can see what the different gun types look like. So we've got here, I quite like a holographic sight on, on like a submachine gun, so I'll, I'll use that. We have a suppressor. Let's just take the standard one. Uh, vertical foregrip's always nice for stability. And then we've got a rail option, which gives us a hefty laser sight here on the side. So that's looking pretty beefy. I like that a lot. And then for our pistol options, we can, uh, well, there's no sight option. We have our suppressor that we can equip. I don't think the suppressors matter too much. As you'll see, once we go around the corner, they pretty much start shooting at you from the get-go. Um, but we can always equip a laser sight anyway. It's just nice. I quite like the, uh, the silenced um, sound effects, but Personal preference, I guess. So let's go get into some action. Ooh, ooh. Now, I did mention that it was a hardcore tactical shooter, and one of the things I noticed when I tested it is just the sheer amount of damage that the MTF units deal with their guns. It is insane. And it really hurts. So we got to be very careful in terms of being shot here. This game can be played up to four people, so it's probably a lot easier when it is with four people. But we've got three lives, basically, that we can try to make happen here. So we've got three chances to get through this campaign, and then we pretty much have to start again. I think at the moment the campaign is about one to two hours, so we'll just see how far we can get. 
If it ends up being two hours, then it ends up being two hours. Otherwise, oh. You see that? That was one bullet. And I already lost a whole chunk and a half. And that doesn't regenerate. Now you can understand what happens if we get hit by like a fully auto machine gun. You just drop in half a second. It's insane. Okay. It's two down. And you'll see the clip system's really interesting. So at the bottom right there, you've got kind of like the clip that we used gets pushed to the back of the pile. So if I like shoot a couple of bullets there, you see that the clip goes down. And then when I reload, it kind of shuffles it all along. So that our empty or our half empty clips get pushed to the bottom of the pile and we get a new fresh one. I really like that system. It's kind of cool that we'll be able to like go through some fresh ammo clips and then eventually once we start to run low, we'll have to start reusing what we didn't use in our first kind of rotation of ammo. And that's really awesome. I thought there was more MTF units to be honest. So I'm kind of a bit nervous <laughs> pushing forwards here. We have a bit of a lean so we can... We can Lean around some corners. But it looks okay. Alright. I'll trust this for now. There's been a few occasions where I've kind of gone around a corner and you just drop so quickly. It's just... There's nothing you can do. But hopefully that won't happen here today. Alright. So as well as the flashlight, we also have a night vision mode. It's probably going to look pretty awful in this room, but it's not too bad in this one. And that looks pretty awesome. The only thing that's weird about uh, the night vision mode is that if you try to aim, you do this. You like kind of hold the gun to the side instead of aiming down the sights. If I, if I aim down the sights without night vision, it looks like this. Same with when you activate the torch. But when you activate night vision and you try to aim down the sights, you end up just kind of like bending it towards you. I'm not sure if that was a deliberate feature or not, but it just feels a bit weird. And I'm not entirely sure why that is a thing, but there you go. All right, let's uh, see what we're dealing with. So our objective right now is to proceed into the entry zone. As I mentioned, we are just outside of area 12. So we've got to kind of like bust our way in here. Uh, can't go in here. Okay, just a bit of a side storage room. Interesting that the, the facilities on the mountainside, I didn't read that the first time I played this. So I was trying to kind of guess where we were in the world. But it's nice to know. Just in case you see any like kind of like environmental features that show maybe like sides of cliffs, or caves or something like that, we now know that we're, we're kind of in the mountainside. And of course if we're going down, then we're probably going to be going into more like caves within the mountainside rather than maybe like a fortress on top. Which is, it makes sense. When you're a secret organization, you probably don't want to advertise your permission on top of, or position on top of a giant mountainside somewhere. All right, we've made it to the entrance zone. Various enemies are not allied and will attack each other. Initially, staying out of their fights might be a good option. I don't think we have that option. So. <laughs> Welcome to Psy Z. It's already infected most of the civilians within the foundation. And they're coming at us hard. Now, I think we actually ended up taking out the bulk of them, which is a bit of a shame. So now we have pretty much all the MTF units to deal with. Which is not good. Looks like they're getting bullied. I think the zombies might have won. That's good news for us. The, <laughs> the zombies are significantly easier to kill than the MTF trained units. That's for sure. Even if I am a trained member myself. Okay. From the information that I read, it seems like we are probably a member of the Global Occult Coalition, or the GOC forces. They seem to be like the main kind of repellent organization that's fighting back against the Foundation. Look at these guys. It's nice that they just dropped to a single headshot. That feels good. That feels like how it should be. They do a little squirm before they die. Oof. I wonder if we can get like a viewer one of these. You end up with such a pile of bodies. Like, look at this. Let's see what we're dealing with. This is the size E program. Get it in night vision too. Disgusting. It looks like these ones have been experimented on in the first place anyway. They've got stitches here. Look. All the way down their stomach. 
the jaws, the bottom jaws have bursted off and it's just a, just a massive tongue now. I think these guys mostly just beat you to death instead of eating you zombie style. I don't think there's biting. It's more just punch them in the face until they die. Which is fine. We can we can cope with that. Okay, left or right. Or it leads to the same place, that's fine. We can deal with that. Get into the parking garage. Or garage. So here we have an ammunition closet. That should restock all of our magazines, they're now back to full. And a health kit, thank god. So that we can survive at least one more hit before we go down. Access code, 5179. Should get us into the garage. Boop, bop, beep, boop. And we're in! Oh god, they're already coming. I'm gonna get some distance. Get some pistol kills. It feels good to kill these things. It feels great. <laughs> Squirming around there. Awesome. Any more? One more. We don't have a knife, so we do have to just kind of gun them down. It's our only option. Uh, interestingly as well, in the bottom right hand corner, we've got kind of different fire modes. So at the moment our SMG is set to kind of a single shot mode, so if I hold down the trigger I just fire a single burst, but we can get a fully auto mode. Oh no, this is like a triple burst. Okay, there you go. This one comes with a triple burst option. Interesting. And from the pistol side, it's just a single shot. But you can change the kind of burst fire mode with some of the various weapons that we might come across in the facility. Ooh, 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 that sounds like an MTF unit. I'm terrified of them. There's more. Ooh, there's some. Oh, this one's like an MTF converted. Interesting. I don't know who these hazmat guys are. <laughs> yeah, pile up, pile up. <laughs> Come on, join the pile. Does it over here, over here, over here. <laughs> Too far. Don't. <laughs> Try and get a massive pile up going on. It'd be funny. Reminds me of the SCP Labrat days when we tried to avoid uh, 096 and 173 had pictures of 096 strapped to his face. We made a giant bundle of ragdoll bodies and tried to hide underneath it all. But 096 knows. He always knows where we are. You can never hide. But you certainly can't run. Peaky pee. Oh! oh, he doesn't know. He doesn't know. Even though I'm missing all my shots, he doesn't know. <laughs> okay. Two MTFs down. Squirm in. Trip the breaker to open the shutter. Will do. As soon as we've cleared this room. They've kind of got like, if you've ever played Call of Duty with the Call of Duty bots, they have that kind of like thing where they move around kind of very robotic like and then when they see you they kind of stand there for a bit and they're like just giving you time to kind of shoot them in the head and then afterwards they go full like hacks mode, do a 360 and shoot you in the head like immediately. That's kind of what the AI feels like at the moment. They don't tend to miss their shots when they fire, put it that way. Uh -huh, so we've got a breaker panel here. That should hopefully open the garage. Nice. Of course there's a million more zombies coming out. What's that on your head? You're wearing a party hat! <laughs> what? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> Happy birthday to zombie. Ooh. Oh! Gotta reload. God, look at the party hats. What, what, what is this? <laughs> Synchronized squirms. It's a hive mind. And they all bleed from their genitals, what? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. It's one of my favourite things to play games in the early <laughs> modes. I absolutely love just some of the like weird bugs that you come across. Some of the like jank. <laughs> it's my favourite. <laughs> really is. Hmm. 
Okay, area 12 offices. So we're making our way through. It's not too bad. Containment breach, seek shelter immediately. Yeah, so during the kind of like end of the world state, which is very similar to kind of the tales of SCP-5000, and I guess I can touch on that briefly, but basically... When the core directive changed and the SCP Foundation decided that all human life should end... I think these guys are going to bust through here. They, uh... Their kind of like main method of kind of ending humanity, I guess, is to just take all of the, the captured SCPs that they ever have, especially all the deadly ones, and just let them loose on humanity. It's just like... Organize some site-wide container breaches. Am I shooting through here? Oh no, that one's head stuck. <laughs> oh no. Let's see if we can get any more. Come on. Come on, one more. Oh. Oh, look at this. It's just spraying out. Oh god, it's horrible. <laughs> Let's open that up. Oh no, they're all stuck in the wall. Oh no, please. Get out. Get out. Get out. Oh my god. If anybody comes across and sees this, tell them it wasn't me. But yeah, it's a pretty good method of kind of like ending humanity. Just get these huge containment breaches going. Unleash all your favorite SCPs upon the world, your 173s, your 096s. And yeah, let them all die. So this is, well, once you kind of change your weapon, you can't change it back, which is kind of annoying. But we have a UMP-45 now, which I think has three burst modes. A single shot, triple burst. Is that triple burst? Oh, there you go. And then a fully auto. Which feels pretty powerful. Let's see what we can customize this one like. So we used like a holographic sight last time, so maybe we can get something a bit more heavy duty. I mean, this one's kind of lightweight, which is kind of cool. But we'll, we'll take like a... A circular scope, like an ACOG. It's probably a bit too much zoom for a gun like this, but hey, we'll do it anyway. We'll go without the suppressor so you can see what that's kind of like. And we'll just change to whatever grip like this. You don't really have gun stats, or you can't see the gun stats, or I haven't worked out how to see the gun stats. So you just got to kind of guess what each of them do, really. And I do like having the laser sight. It's good for hip fire. Yeah, it seems a bit like a bit too much on the zoom for what we need it for, but hey, it's kind of cool all the same. Ooh, night vision's very bright in here. I thought it would be a little bit better. So we need to find some numbers to get through here, I guess. To get to the checkpoint. Probably going to be through here with this guy. But... That sounds like a gun. Oh, yeah, yeah. They're going after an MTF. Get him! Oh my god, he didn't stand a chance. Are they going to come back around the corner now that they've murdered him? Ooh. Oh, look at the little, like, blobs. Bits that fly out. Juicy. I think the AI is one of those things that's being quite criticized during its release. Especially with the zombies. The zombies tend to follow kind of like the same parts. Maybe if we get these guys to break out here. I mean, you've probably seen it already. But they basically follow the exact same kind of line towards you. So if you get a few zombies, you can literally just shoot in a straight line. You don't ever have to move your gun. And you can get all of the zombies kind of in, in one shot, basically. Yeah, like this. You don't, you, don't, you don't move the pistol, they just... They come at you in the exact same straight line. So I think a lot of people would be nice to see maybe some like spread out tactics, maybe they use different routes to get to you, something like that. Just to keep you on your feet. Which I can understand. I'd quite like to see that too. Uh, we got our COVID screens. Very good. Oh, we have some glow sticks as well. Kind of like uh, GTFO style. You can light up the room with some glow sticks. It's kind of fun. So far I haven't really needed that, but... You never know. 4266. Alright. Let's get back to the checkpoint. Oh, damn, just the bodies littering the halls. Oh, if anyone ever makes it out of this extermination event, then they're going to have a fun time coming back here. Oh, also, we have a. We have. <laughs> Doctor. Uh... <laughs> Gone into paint and scribbled out the word pepper. <laughs> Even down here, look. We've got Bepsis. <laughs> and, and, and Dr. Black Square. Seriously? Is that conk? <laughs> we got conk. 
Oh. Off-brand foods are kind of one of the funniest things. So good. I love it. Or 2666. All right, can we get in here? Get the blast door open. Is that what that is? Ah, oh, it kind of looks like a blast door. Uh, so I think that's going to just basically get rid of all of our uh, attachments, which doesn't sound like a good idea. So let's not do that. <gasps> Aww, little forklift. That's cute. Wait, I'm... Oh, okay, I just opened this. Right. I was going to say, I'm interacting with something here, but I think I just opened this and turned that, which I think has just opened our blast door for us. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. Let's stock up on ammo and health. Proceed our way through. So, from the main menu, I guess in terms of, like, what's upcoming for this game, it seems like they do know that the AI is a thing that they want to improve on. The map as well is something that they've been doing a lot of work on. I think before this version, before the Steam release version, there was kind of like an early access version that you could get your hands on that was even earlier than this early access version. And that had a very different map that I think looked perhaps a lot worse than this one. A lot of people are... Oh, it seems like they're quite happy with these map changes. And to be honest, it looks good. The visuals are really nice on this game, for sure. So, they've definitely done good work with that. Oh boy. Oh boy. This guy's noticed. And little Jimmy in the back there's noticed. Yeah, look at this light. They're coming from a different angle. It's quite, it's quite exciting, you know? We get overwhelmed. It's good. They closed this behind me. I did. Oh, thank god. Okay, that should give me some breathing room when they come in here. <laughs> Try again, we're stuck in the door again. <laughs> I don't think we got any grenades. Did any of them... They've given up. I... <laughs> oh boy, is that it? Oh, it's going everywhere. Look at this. Oh, oh he's starting to lose arms. What about legs? Shoot legs. Oh! Yeah, we should try shooting different limbs and see what happens. That guy definitely, like, his arm popped off. That was kind of cool. Ooh! Ow! Zombie hits are a lot less than bullets, that's for sure. Okay. Yeah, so you see in that instance, like, if they come from different angles, you quickly get overwhelmed. It's not quite as easy to dispatch them all. It's good fun. Look at that doorway. God damn. Alright, attempt to start the backup generators. We've made it to the generator room. Okay, we can do that. I guess these are the backup generators. We can get some night vision going on in here. Oh, yeah. With the laser sight. What's this? Nothing. Mmm. -hmm. Alright, weapon change. M24A3, what's this? Like a shotgun? Oh, it's a bolt action. Okay. I'm not sure how a sniper's gonna perform in this, but if we can get some collateral shots, that could be good fun. Alright, storage this way. Is that health? Ammo? Nothing. Turn this on. Refuel the natural gas depot, C3H8. Okay, looks like the power's out. Makes sense? Given how dark it is. Did it get even darker? Kind of looks like it. So maybe this is those C3H8 things? Yeah, yeah. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. So we got to find a few more of those. Uh, yeah, and then, and then from the main menu, it seems like they have teased 173 kind of being introduced here. In the various form. It seems like there might even be multiple 173 instances. That's MTF's getting overwhelmed. Jeez, they're going hard on that. Oh god, you're not gonna make it. Oh, look at him. Oh. But I guess they're coming for me now. Oh god, yeah. Collateral. Ooh, that felt good. I think I killed multiple. Oh, I'm on the other side of the door. Okay, okay, okay. I think I closed it. Yes. Ooh, not that it matters. Wow. 
Last bullet. Whoa, did you see that guy fly around the corner? Jesus. What was that? Went into mega speed mode. Sonic the size E. <laughs> Fireworks. <laughs> oh, this is why I'm not allowed to touch swords and sorcery. I get too excited with all the gore. Pump activation. Ah, okay. There's another one. That's good stuff. Who is that? And where is that? Nothing. Alright. So, sneak my way through here. So I mentioned briefly that this game was kind of heavily inspired by the events of SCP-5000. And that kind of has a very similar scenario. The SCP Foundation's core beliefs changed and they kind of want to wipe out humanity. Though, interestingly, this all takes place in a different dimension in SCP-5000. So, you could argue that this game is set in that different dimension, and that's kind of what we're playing now. Or you could argue that they're kind of two separate things entirely. Ah, we've come back. We only got two of three. Maybe I missed one. I'll head back. But yeah, so basically, SCP-5000 isn't actually this whole sizey alternative units first thing. SCP-5000 is actually a mechanical suit that randomly materialized inside of one of the SCP's cells one day. I think it was SCP-579. And that the suit itself was damaged. It was no longer functional, except it had a bunch of kind of storage log files on it. And it's those log files that kind of told you where this suit came from and kind of how it, yeah, ended up kind of materializing out of the blue here. Where would that extra gas pipe be? Ah, right here. So SCP-5000 itself is actually like an SCP, like the SCP Foundation made it in this alternative dimension and it's known as an absolute exclusion harness. And that basically provides like a bunch of benefits to the user, such as removing the need to eat and drink, giving them access to kind of store logs using thoughts, take pictures using what they physically see. And it also kind of the main benefit, I guess, is it gives them a sort of partial invisibility. Just take a second to read our objectives. Lower the active water, activate the terminal in the control room. Okay. I think we've done this area, so maybe we retrace the steps. Yeah, a partial invisibility. So, kind of like imagine, like, the there's, there is a person walking around right now. Like, you, the, the person isn't invisible. You can see the person, but the absolute exclusion harness basically means that everyone who sees the person doesn't recognize the fact that they see the person. It's kind of like like a brain blocker for everyone else. So, yeah, it's just like basically being the ultimate introvert. Where no one no one cares about your existence. It's kind of sad, actually. Maybe I shouldn't go down. <laughs> you get the idea, though. People just don't recognize the fact that you are there, even though you are. Which gives you, essentially, invisibility. And what materialized along with the suit is a dead body. Dead body of a man named Pietro Wilson who was an employee at the SCP Foundation and is in this universe, the, the universe that the suit materialized in, is actually alive in, in our universe, I guess. <clears throat> How would I activate these things in here? And our version of Pietro had no recollection of having the suit or being dead or any of the events that occurred detailed in the log files. So you can assume that they are two different things. Wait for the water to die down. Cool. This is the super secret entrance into Area 12. No one would have ever been able to traverse the, the raging stream that was flowing through the mountainside. Proceed into Area 12. Sounds good to me. Cool. Ah, and here we are. Water treatment. Find a way out of water treatment. Must be a way through the shutters. It must be. I'm gonna get some glow sticks down. We haven't really used them. We've only got one left. You don't get a lot. Yeah. Yeah, look at that. Nothing can stand in our way now. Ooh, it's cool with the night vision. The reflections on the ceilings. Here 
you go. It's about as good as it gets for a cinematic pen around. Hmm. Can we go in here? No. Alright. Maybe we'll try a different door. This one? Nope. Down here! Aha. Uh -huh. Hey, and we're back to a workbench. Do we get a different gun? Because I'm kind of a little bit done with this one, to be honest. See what kind of uh, things we can put on it, though. Maybe that'll help. Oh, proper sniper scope. Kind of cool. These were kind of like one of my favorite weapons to play in like battlefield games. Just like a single shot bolt action with like a really short range scope on it. Use it more as like a, a battle rifle, carbine style. We'll give it the laser sight. Yeah, it's looking good. Look at that. Awesome. I think the control room might be up here somewhere. Yes. Oh, and then we get a UMP anyway. Well, I may as well try this out and then we'll switch afterwards. Wait, 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 <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. Do we open it? Oh god, yeah, 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 open, open. Can I shoot through the walls? Maybe. Oh, oh, they came in hard. That's a big horde. That is a big horde. Okay, 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 okay. We'll bait them around. Get some distance. They're still coming down there? There's one in there, I think. Right, right, right there. Oh, just missed. Oh, well, they're definitely coming now. Hi, hey guys. Line up, please. Thank you. Oh yeah, we're going to try different limbs, won't we? Okay, let's try some legs. <laughs> okay, they don't even... They don't even get to, to crawl around. <laughs> they do trip. Look at this guy. Yeah. We might be able to remove an arm or two. Okay. They are fully removable. That's kind of cool. Bit grim, though, I guess. Gore warning. <laughs> So yeah, I probably won't detail all of what the logs do because there's a lot of information there and it's very hard for me to kind of report that without getting the whole Chinese whispers thing where the information is kind of slightly different depending on my interpretation, but I can give you kind of like a rough overview. So yeah, it's kind of like the world is ending, the core directors have changed and this guy, this Pietro Wilson was kind of like the first um, person to maybe experienced that being a worker inside of the SCP Foundation. They were kind of one day all got called into like the lunchroom to have like a big kind of gathering and then basically this MTF unit came in. Um, I can't even remember the exact one. I can guess or I can do like an educated guess based on what I read. Try to remember. I think it was Epsilon 19 came in and they just started gunning everyone down in the, in the kitchen. Everyone was scrambling over each other. Bodies were piling up. And this Pietro guy managed to crawl his way out and make his way to the absolute exclusion harness, which essentially saved his life, making him invisible to all the assaulting SCP units. And from then on, he escaped the 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 site that he was working at. I don't think it was Area 12. They don't have any links, really. But find a way out of water treatment. I just haven't done that yet. Okay. But yeah, so now, now this guy's kind of like roaming around on the outside, and you basically... It, it tells a series of him kind of walking through and observing the horrors of the world from kind of like this invisible ghost perspective. Wait, this just comes back out here. Did I push that button yet? Maybe not. No. Okay, good. Oh, fantastic. Another wave. <laughs> Can I get to the stairs first? Ah! Yes. Going over their heads completely. Ouch. Oh, they don't have to get very close to get a punch on me. It's kind of nasty. Alright. So this guy, Pietro, basically, like, he manages to intercept a lot of, like, radio channels. And very similar to this game, it seems like the Global Occult Coalition is one of kind of like the main repellent forces that are fighting against the the SCP Foundation. And you kind of like, as a bit of a side story, get to see kind of like their resistance 
and eventually they end up getting completely wiped out, but I guess that's kind of spoilers. Although I'm telling you the story anyway, so there is no spoilers. And so yeah, once the Global Occult, global occult Coalition go down, it's pretty much- oh god. I think there's MTF units there. Yeah, 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 yeah right there, right there. Oh, Jesus, Jesus! Got one. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Come on. I will shoot you in the penis if you don't come down. I will shoot you in the penis if you don't come down. I did warn him. You all heard it. I did warn him. I just want to go back and just check if there's a med kit because we're really low and if we have to fight MTF units, this is not going to go well for us. Alright, well, I didn't find anything, so we'll just have to try and face the danger. I mean, I killed these two anyway, so potentially there's not going to be any more, but I guess you just never know, really. Area 12, canals. We've got a couple more lives, even if we do end up dying here, so... It'll be fine. So once the Global Occult Coalition go down, it's kind of like... the end for humanity at that point. There's not really anyone to fight back. Oh God, they're coming through here? Ow, ow, ow! There was one in the side there. Oh no, no, no! Damn it! I knew we needed to heal. Alright, and we respawn with nothing but a pistol and some glow sticks. They love their glow sticks. I think glow sticks are the answer to everything. Did a little bend there, that was a bit weird. Oh. Get some body shots. Alright, we're back. It's also G for flashlight, obviously. Makes perfect sense. Glashlight. We've got another one of these. Turning the power off to the water. Cool. Blood. So I think one of the coolest things about this, this log from Pietro is that it details a lot of, like, the SCPs and kind of how the Foundation uses them to take over humanity. There's, there's like a lot of tables throughout the document that explain that, and I think that's really cool. It kind of like ties the universe together and makes it seem very much like it's part of the same thing. At the moment, like, because all the documents are kind of in their separate windows and they're all kind of their own separate things, there's not a lot to kind of tie them together. And this, this SCP really does that, it really ties them together, and it's really awesome. Can we go in here? Is that over? No. All right. So things like, they circulated pictures of 096 online, and so a lot of people saw that. I mean, you just post it to Reddit, uh-oh, everyone's starting to die now. 096 is having an absolute field day, sprinting around, mauling everyone. Releasing people like 173. Oh god, 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 god. Okay, if we're precise, we can deal with them very quickly. If we're not, it's a bit sketchy. Come on. Okay. Ooh, ooh. Oh, so, ow, ow, there's another one. Did I get him? No, no, no. He's coming. How many are there? Alright. Alright. That's a lot. That is a lot. What's this? Ooh, a shotgun! In Mossberg! <laughs> Ooh, yes! Ah! Oh, health! Not that we need it. Ammo! And customization. What should we give the shotgun? Should we just go iron sights for the shotgun? Let's go iron sights. There you go. We'll go basic. Uh, yeah. There's an SCP known as Unlondon, which is basically like this replica of London that has been made uh, a few kilometers underneath London and the idea of that is that it was basically meant as kind of like a, a a last resistance a safe haven in case the world ended a place where everyone could retreat to in the dark times and so everyone started doing that it made sense there's a lot of kind of like mechanical entities in London that are kind of hostile it's one of the SCPs that I'd quite like to explore at some point from a game perspective but 
The SCP Foundation's managed to clear out a lot of safe zones where the mechanical entities can't get you, and that's where a lot of people fled to. But it was all part of the SCP Foundation's plan, because once everyone kind of like rammed themselves down into Unlondon, they just detonated the Alpha Warhead, basically a giant nuclear bomb, completely annihilated Unlondon, and wiped out a lot of the population of London, and potentially refugees from elsewhere in the country too. So that was a big dick move on their part. Uh, there was, they kind of did some, this weird experiment on 173 as well, there was like a log of this. Area 12, transport halls. Interesting. Obtain the critical data file, 0 of 20, get to the data center. Okay. This is probably what we came here for. Makes sense. Raid area 12, yeah I like that. Raid it. Ooh, that sounds like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're gonna have to get pretty up close and personal for this. Where'd he go? Ooh. Throw, throw a chem light. What did that guy have? Submachine gun. Alright. I thought he was running at me with a shotgun then. Oh! Yeah, they did like this. The SCP Foundation basically created their own 173s. I don't know if they managed to use the DNA of 173 to construct these, but they basically made a subset of 173 that was a... Uh... Oh my god, what is that? Is that behind me? Oh! An SCP-173 soldier. Okay, maybe, maybe we'll come back to this later. We've got to deal with this first. Is that it? Is that it? Freaking take your glow sticks. Yeah. Oh, these guys had shotguns, though. What was over here? Where did you come from? You didn't come from anywhere. These, these kind of versions of 173, which were SCP custom made, were like basically stone versions of the MTF guards, but instead it, well, they, they had hollowed out eyes and kind of blades for arms, and they would very much react in a similar way to SCP-173, whereas when you didn't look at them, they would move incredibly fast towards you. But instead of snapping your neck, these guys obviously had their blade arms. They would just cut you up. Perhaps when you blinked, uh, they maybe have a bit more of a frenzy mode, so maybe you'd blink, the statue would be closer, and there'd be cuts all along the walls where this thing's just gone ham, like slicing away. Like crazy. There was a bunch of them running around that they used to kind of like end humanity and played a big part in uh, Pietro's story. Hey! Not every day you see yourself in a reflection. Check it out. Uh huh. Very nice. You see my glow stick? Yeah, you do. <laughs> awesome. Oh, night vision would be cool here. We can get a bit more of hip fire action with the shotgun as well. Yeah, let's do this. Look at the reflection in the floor as well. The laser. Another shotgun? Mm -hmm. Different one? What have I got? A Mossberg. That's also a Mossberg. Okay, never mind. Oh, we got some choices. The option to take the MK-18. Well, I, this is like a natural assault rifle, right? Yeah, we haven't had this yet. Okay, we'll, we'll get this. What have we not used? I don't think we've used this tiny little thing, the MRO. We'll do that. And this one's got canted? What's that? What is that? Oh, yeah, so this is like a second sight that you can use. I haven't worked out how to use this yet. But you'll see now that we have like... Yeah, so we've got the red dot sight here. And there's an option now that we can switch between this and the ACOG. H? Y? What? <laughs> Hello! There's a key for everything! Just push them all, eventually we'll work it out. Thumb, mouse, button, two. Thumb, mouse, button, two. What does that even mean? Let's, let's change that to something useful. Like, do we have a T yet? T. T. So we do have a melee. It's like a weird melee. Yeah, and there you go. Now we can use that to, to toggle between different modes. So we've got an ACOG sight. This one. 
and then kind of like a slightly more red dot side. That's awesome. Look at that. Okay. So we can we can probably get something a bit more heavy duty now to go hand in hand with it. Like an actual ACOG. So there you go. So now we can we can zoom in with this. Oh, look at that. Okay, I really like that. <laughs> That's awesome. So I'm just playing around with some of the controls. Okay, I take it we're breaking into the Foundation's facility now. So I guess this area is going to be mostly safe from the zombies, although that guy's a bit dead, so... He got crushed by the Dr. Black Square! At least he didn't get hit by the conk. I think radioactive might be like a Mountain Dew thing, maybe? Oh, and then, and then Bepsi. Or Bepis, sorry. Bepis. So Pietro goes through like a bunch of character development. Ooh, who are we? Interesting. Where you kind of like work out a bit about his backstory, he tells you a bit about how he's always loved being like a detective, Sherlock Holmes style thing, and and you kind of see him go from being like a coward that ran away from the danger to eventually kind of like facing the danger head on and kind of giving himself a mission. And he basically goes and plucks up enough courage to go to one of the foundation sites. Look at this zone. Oh my god, that's how quick the machine gun can drop you. It's madness. Jesus. Okay, one life left. That guy's now camping in the mess hall. What? What? It just spawned us back in the danger. You're kidding me. Well, that's it. The campaign's over. There's not really a lot we can do now. Oh, so sad. Yeah, look at this. We go right back to the beginning again. It's crazy. Well, there we go. I guess I will leave it for a part two, potentially. We'll go back into this if you guys want to see that and potentially carry on the SCP-5000 explanation as well. Either way, it's probably something that you could definitely check out. It's really cool. You get to see a bit of an alternate universe. It tells you about some of the, the SCPs that you perhaps don't know about, and it gives you kind of just like a, a good explanation and a, a good tie-up to the SCP Foundation. It's a really, really cool document. I really like it. So thank you very much for watching. Let me know what you think down below. I'll give a quick thought now, actually. So the AI, I think, definitely needs some work. Um, it's not too bad, but definitely the zombies could be made a bit more kind of exciting, a bit more kind of roguelike. Instead of just running at you mindlessly, perhaps they have a bit more kind of like feral behavior where they just charge in weird and wonderful angles that you don't really expect. Uh, the MTF units, I mean, they're okay. I think it's probably going to be easier in a multiplayer setting than it would be without, or just being on your own. But they do drop you very quickly, so you just have to be very, very careful of that. It's insane. I don't think there's a save button either, no. So it's not even like I could have saved it. Uh, the gunplay, the gun is awesome. All the customizations and everything are really awesome. But I think what this campaign mode needs more than anything is a narrative. It needs potentially some radio dialogue, potentially like a cutscene here and there, and maybe more of like a unique introduction to each of the enemies. So, yeah, like perhaps it starts with the, the MTF units, even though they're really hard, so maybe they come in a bit later. Maybe it starts with the zombies, and you get to see them like gnawing on someone, and then it kind of like, it's like, oh my god, look, the size Z program's taken over, and you start like going in, fighting all of them. Potentially there's like different versions of them. I think that the developers want to add different kind of uh, like types of zombies, similar to Left 4 Dead style, so potentially they get introduced along as well, kind of like the story. That would be really awesome. And then just, yeah, more of an explanation of what we're doing and why we're here. Because at the moment, I had to explain all that. Like, I don't know, you don't get given any hints towards the Foundation being rogue, other than the fact that you're shooting them, but realistically we could be the bad guys because there's no real explanation there. So yeah, just kind of like clarifying all of that would be really cool and putting it into a decent narrative. But other than that, I think this game has a lot of potential. I think the multiplayer mode could be quite exciting too. Uh, you could definitely get a lot of things with the wave survival, PvP, things like that. It's quite good. And uh, yeah, I'd like to see how this game grows. So if you'd like to see more, let me know about So. I don't even know what that was. If you'd like to see more, let me know what you think down below of this game, and also let me know if you'd like to see more episodes. Other than that, thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you all in the next time. So until then, I goodbye! Hear.